Chris on the Vinyl Transmission channel. Just have a few minutes here before Will and Holly get back. So I want to talk about the career of Peter Golby. But before that, I'm going to show recent additions to my Uriah Heap collection. So let's start off this magic time with the 2020 release here of Magic Night. This is the first time released on vinyl of this concert with the uh, Bernie Shaw era. This is a double LP with a gatefold. Also released this year has been the magician's birthday party this is one that I believe has John Lawton guesting on it and we'll talk about some more records with him on it but really beautiful job on these the artwork from Roger Dean on these is just amazing this is acoustically driven this was really the reason that I got super back into the band around the year 2000 and this is also a first time vinyl release. This has uh, Ian Anderson uh, playing some flute on this. As a sort of a classical group of musicians behind the band is amazing. Uh, I've also added this one to the collection. This is my first Japanese pressing of the Innocent Victim album. Comes with a very cool insert there. Take me across the water, I need a place to down the ranches up. Show me the spot. Yes, I did. And then here is kind of the grail of the Roger Dean covers and an album I've been after a long time. This is a, a German pressing of the Sea of Light album. One of the last with uh, Lee Kerslake still in the band. It's got multiple songs written from Trevor Boulder. And the band has just really never sounded as great as this. They have great albums after this, but they've honestly never sounded better than on this one. So now we're going to go through some of the uh, players of Uriah Heep and different bands that they were in that I've added to the collection. This is uh, John Lawton from Lucifer's Friend, their album Mean Machine. This is from 1981 and has definitely kind of a new wave of British heavy metal feel for the band. Uh, kind of comparable maybe to a little bit of uh, Black, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell, with a little more of a bluesy feel. Then I have the uh, this album, Stratus, called Throwing Shapes. This has uh, Bernie Shaw and Clive Burr from Iron Maiden. Definitely an AOR type of album but very catchy. This has the theme song from Class of Newcomb High, Run For Your Life. Then we have the, uh, the uh, this album contains uh, Gary Thane. This is from June of 1970 and has the band with a uh, heavy horn section. So you've got a real heavy classic rock 
with sort of a real artsy jazz horn section going on. And the final one here before we get into the Peter Golby records is this one from Grand Prix, their album Samurai. Now their first album, Bernie Shaw was in the band, then he was replaced by Robin McCauley who was on this. But this does have Phil Lanzon also from Uriah Heath. And this has a great sound, sort of like Europe, uh, definite sort of just great melodies with a real, you know, sort of keyboard laden, melodic, anthemic, hard rock. Record. Great singing from Robin McCauley. Okay, so what we're going to do is talking about Peter Golby, who was the first uh, rock singer I ever saw on stage, is we're going to kind of start from when he left the music business and go backwards to where he began. So he did about 20 years in the music business. And at the end of his life, he had done, or the end of his career, I should say, because I think he moved on to work for an amplifier company or some kind of music company like that. But at the very end of his career, what he was doing, he did some background vocals for uh, Tiger Tales, their album Berserk from 1990, which is uh, very much on my want list. And so in that time, in the late 80s, 1990s, I have to represent that time period. This is a collection of his demos and a few released songs he did for um, a group they called it Perfect Strangers, which is basically a solo vehicle. But this has some great songwriting from Peter Golby. You know, he just would write these great melodies in a very pop rock uh, formation. Angel! memorable matching a lyric to a uh, to a melody and very inspiring stuff not very commercially viable against your Kurt Cobain and your Pearl Jam but um, a very enjoyable listen the track hold the dream that is at the beginning of this video and the end of this video so throughout here we're going to take some uh, drop-ins from this music release called Gypsy.
Now, this is really the only full document of Peter Golby playing with Uriah Heep, and it is from Camden Palace in London, 1985. So here, John Sinclair is in the band, who would go on to be with Ozzy's band. Trevor Boulder has replaced Bob Daisley in the band. And this is really looking like uh, just before Phil Lanzon joins the group. And one more singer that we're going to just talk about since we're talking about very uh, going deep on Uriah Heep here. This is the singer who briefly replaced Peter Golby all the way there on the left. His name is Steph Fontaine. And I don't know if you've ever had a girlfriend who asked you to go to the store for a tampon, but it's even worse when she asks you to go to the store for a Steph Fontaine. Highly embarrassing. Okay, so the next group of records we're going to look at is the records. Uh, I don't have the most, uh, well, let's start with this. This is after he had left Uriah Heep and Bernie Shaw was the singer, and they recorded his song, Blood Red Roses. This has backup tracks from the uh, Live in Moscow record. And this is the first uh, Uriah Heat patch I have here in my collection. So it comes with this rather terrible album cover. But a great song, Blood Red Roses, from the Raging Silence album. So what I'm not going to show is the most common records from him, the three that he did with Uriah Heat, which are three, two, and one. All great records. This last one, Abominog, was the one that was the first concert I saw where Uriah Heep was opening for Judas Priest with Bob Daisley in the band. And one more guy that we'll add, talk about, this is with, uh, this is the last thing that Trapeze did. This is their live album, Live in Texas, Dead Armadillos. Really a pretty funny album cover with the armadillo jumping off the building and all these different scenarios of roadkill. Kind of a bizarre concept, but the band was a, just a great classic rock outfit. At this point, only Mel Galley is the original member with uh, Peter Golby on vocals. They do go all the way back to the You Are The Music, We're Just The Band era. So a very entertaining record and shows how great Peter Golby was in front of a crowd. You know what to do. This is dedicated to David Byron. He was the wizard of a thousand kings And a chance to meet him one night wandering
other than that, he did one studio album with Trapeze, which just, most of it sounds like it should have been a staple on FM radio. It has just a great sound. And that is the album Hold On. This is from 1980, although I think it was originally released in 78 or 79 with the famous uh, cheesecake cover uh, to be replaced by this design. But this has uh, Dave Holland in the band, who when I saw them play uh, Screaming for Vengeance Store, he was the drummer in the band. So this is kind of cool because it has both uh, Peter Golby and Dave Holland on it. But very catchy, great FM rock. Dave Holland is an underrated drummer. He kind of sounds like a, you know, the Ringo Starr of hard rock. Just, you know, a master of the cowbell, the master of understatement. You really hear his personality on this more than you do uh, any of the Judas Priest albums, in my opinion. Okay, so the last record here is Peter Golby's introduction into the uh, into the recording world. And one thing he did uh, between Trapeze and this is audition for Rainbow. And so he actually uh, recorded, um, what song was it? He recorded... recorded Since You've Been Gone. And when Richie Blackmore realized that Peter Goldby couldn't hit above a high A, he actually fired him from the band. And it's certainly true that Peter Goldby did not have a great vocal range, but hopefully all these clips have shown you and a playlist I'll put in the bottom of this video where you'll see a lot of the songs that, that Uriah Heep covered from different songwriters during his era with the band I'll match those up against the versions that he did with Uriah Heep, and you can really hear how much emotion and style he brought to those songs, even though he, you know, was not a singer with a great range, like Graham Bonnet, who replaced him. Also, it is said that that is the reason that Ken Hensley left the band, that when they hired John Sloman for the Conquest album, Ken Hensley had wanted to hire Peter Goldie and the failure of that album and, and them not selecting Goldie was preceded Ken Hensley leaving the band. So without a do, it's not a mystery, it's not really a myth, but it is a fable. From 1973, kind of out of the British uh, folk scene, there's some songs on here that sound like Crosby, Stills and Nash. There's some things on here that sound like XTC, just a very melodic, folk-based pop rock, but with a real distinct melody line. and. One of the, I've been looking for this for a long time, but when I saw that this, I found a copy that comes with this great 8x10 of Mr. Peter Goldby, I knew this was the one I had to add to the collection. So thanks for watching. The last day we'll take a look at this gatefold, and I appreciate you for tuning in and enjoying the fable.